everyone, so we're looking at English variations again, and today I'm joined by... Stu, I'm from Australia. William, from America. And Mel, from Ireland. Let's get started. So the first word that we have in British English, this would be trainers. <laughs> in English, in uh, Australian English, uh, we would call these runners. Really? We call them runners too. We're oh, something, we're something, no, in <laughs> something in common with you guys. My goodness. We call them sneakers, and there's a whole science to it. Really? Yeah. Sneakers. Because you're sneaking like, around? <laughs> you're running in them. Yeah, you have to do, apparently, if you sneak around to get it. No. <laughs> <laughs> do you know where the name comes from, though? Because yeah. I've always wondered why they're actually called sneakers. I mean, like, I get trainers and runners. Sneaking, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Trainers and runners make sense because you're training in them, you're running in them. Yeah. But sneakers. American athletes are sneaking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, it's funny, I don't actually associate them with sports. They're, really? they're, they're a fashion item. Sneakers are like oh. worn with jeans and mainly you see the expensive types in rap and in rap videos and they're just, they're, they're street items. Mm. Okay. okay. Trainers are Sneakers mostly for like sports. And athletics. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Okay, next up in British English, we would call this one a camper van. And that's different because a caravan isn't in that, is attached to a car and that gets pulled along. But this is a camper van because it's all in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Australia, we also would call this a camper van. But as soon as you have something attached to the back of the, of the vehicle, then yeah. Then that'd be known as a trailer, but uh, elsewise, if you can live and, and drive inside of the van, yeah, camper van. Trailer. That'd be, that, that would not be a trailer, that would be an RV. Mm -hmm. But a trailer yeah. is something you back. haul with your car and... Yeah. That'd be a car. And I'm absolutely sure about that because my parents used to drag me through for weeks on end uh, on sound vacation. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sound like you loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> We would call in Ireland. We would call that a camper van as well. Yes, camper van. But would you also call like the the van, like the bigger car, a van, or would you call it something else? Van. van yeah. You'd call that a van too. Small truck. Um, yeah. Trunklet. <laughs> Trunklet. <laughs> <laughs> You're making these words up. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Next in British English. Okay, so in British English we have a lot of different terms for police officers. So. They can be coppers, they can be cops, they can be bobby, they can be very derogatory terms. Hmm. But, yeah, those are some of them. Yeah, I guess Australia also has a bunch of, um, yeah, a whole <laughs> bunch of colourful nicknames for <laughs> police officers. But, uh, yeah, generally coppers or, uh, yeah, cops, police officers. Yeah. Mm. Cop, that's, I think that's some, something archetypal American, a cop. Mm. But um, a Bobby is a very specific type of British cop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not all policemen are. Well, policemen, that would be American. And a Bobby is a very specific type of. Uh, what is a Bobby? Is a Bobby the guy who has the thing on his head? Yeah. It's just an arm. Yeah, like the ones who go on like, patrol on the streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are they called Bobbies? If you know, in the comments, please. <laughs> <laughs> but in Ireland, we have a name that nobody uses anywhere else in the world for policemen which is Garda. So Garda is one and Gardi is, is more than one. Oh, so, exactly. And now, see, Mr. <laughs> All over the world. <laughs> and the reason is because it's a, a Gaelic word or an Irish word, so nobody else is using that word. Hmm. So that's, but we also call them policemen as well, but gar, Garda, Gardi. Sounds intuitive. The guard, 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 yeah. Guard, guard, yeah. Guard, yeah. Guard, yeah. Guard, yeah. Next we have, well, in British English, we have a lot of different words for this. Um, so, for angry, you can also be fuming. I know that is going to come up, I guess, livid, but we, we do have a lot of words for angry. Yeah, in Australia, 
We, yeah, we would also say livid, uh, fuming, pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> Americans wouldn't say fuming, maybe, but angry, livid. There's too many syllables. Furious. There's too many syllables in fuming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too difficult. Okay. Miffed. Miffed. Yeah. Miffed. Yeah. Miffed is like and mild, like, pissed off, though. Like. Yeah. yeah. Like, like yeah. it's a little bit angry. It's not too bad. Yeah. 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 But you say, like in Ireland, we could say, like, we'd say you're fuming or angry as well, but you say, we also say to get tick with somebody. Do you say that anywhere else? No. no. You don't have the imagination <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to get tick with somebody. I get it right now. A thick. To get tick. No, get. How do you say it in English? Thick. 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 To get tick. To get tick. To get annoyed with somebody. Oh wait! Now that you say it like that, it sounds like you're ticked off with someone. Oh, yeah, we have ticked off. Yeah. Ticked off is different. Just ticked off is a different word. There's no H in there. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's to get ticked with. Uh, get tick. Right. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Is that where it comes from? To be ticked off? It could. It's just our variation on it. To get, yeah, right. To get sick. But when you say that, to get sick with somebody, it kind of sounds a bit ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> to be <laughs> sick. No, that would be. So well, to be tick is different. Yeah. Right. That's to be done, right? That's to be done. Exactly. Whatever. But to get get sick. Next we have, in British English, airing cupboard. Now this is, I think, quite specific to like English homes and Scottish homes, I guess British homes, because we have boilers in our house and they go in a cupboard and in that cupboard you have like shelves or you can put your airers in and you dry your clothes in there because mm. you get the heat from the boiler <laughs> and we call it an airing cupboard. Right. Well, we, we don't have these in Australia, as, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. We've got 40 degrees in the <laughs> we, We've got bush fires. And bush fires and air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, we, um, uh, yeah, that makes sense because I only started seeing airing cupboards when I moved uh, to, to Europe uh, in the first place. So, honestly, I have no idea what we would uh, call these in, in Australia, but generally it's just a cupboard, but in this particular um, cupboard you've also got a boiler in there so it's able to, to warm your stuff or, or dry, whatever it is. Yeah, because yeah, we yeah. don't really tend to use tumble dryers so much mm. because oh. we yeah. tend to use airers and the washing lines outside. Yeah. Mm. What do you call it in America? We'd say closet. Closet. Even Generally, if you put clothes in it, then you would say clo linen closet. I, I've heard that before. Even with we don't. We, no, we don't have that. You don't have those boilers. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> I've never seen. I don't. I, I couldn't say with authority that we don't have them, but um, I've never seen one. No, we have Probably. this in Ireland. We have this in Ireland as well, but we don't call it. What do you call it? Airing. A linen closet. Airing closet linen. No, we call them hot press. So because it is, it's a hot press. The but cupboard would be in America. Everything you put. Like cutlery or yeah, yeah multi-purpose. Uh, yeah, and, and and as soon as you put clothes in it, yeah, you know, sometimes it's a closet. Yeah, but that's because you're over there. But in Ireland, it's a press. But like a press makes me think of like ironing, like pressing something to make it ironed. <laughs> exactly. So. I'm just imagining like a sandwich press for your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but that's weird. It's what we call it in Ireland and we're sticking with it. We're not changing just because you've got, you can't get with the problem. You know? It's new you technology can't, for me, man. You can't keep up, it's okay. it's okay. So, last but not least, we have everything surrounding to, um, like, piss. So, to take the piss, to um, take the piss, to be pissed, to be pissed off, they're all different. So to be pissed off is to be angry, to be pissed is to be drunk, mm. to take a piss is to go for a wee, to um, take the piss is to make fun of someone. Yeah, yeah. So is that the same in Australia? Yeah, generally, generally. Yeah. The same in Ireland as well, but I think we're going to confuse our American friend here with this one. Yeah. We, we don't piss. We don't piss. <laughs> we don't piss. <laughs> Nobody pisses. <laughs> Depending on where you are in the States, uh, you should be very careful with the word piss. Right, why? Um, cultural thing, I guess. I mean, it's, it's different does. if you... Nobody goes for piss in the US. <laughs> Not in the South. Not in the south. No. You just don't go. Not in the south. No, it's against religion. <laughs> you, would, you would use all kinds of euphemisms. My father used to see a man about a horse or 
Uh, that's so, what Team Man About a Horse was about. Yeah. Oh, ah, right. I thought he was going to look at a horse. Okay, all right. We also have like spend a penny. Yeah. Effort that too. For going to the toilet. Yeah. Spend a penny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it because there's like a toll on the bathroom? There's yeah, like... I guess, but it's no longer a penny. It's like a pound. In yeah. Most right. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you say like in America then? So slash. Take a leak. Take, take a leak. Yeah. Slash. Go for, wee. Go for wee. Urinate. But to get pissed, like alcohol-wise, like to get drunk, you know, you don't use that one. Get drunk. You, but you don't say to get pissed. So to get no, pissed. no. That would mean you're getting angry. Yeah, pissed off would be angry. But you don't have to get pissed. pissed. He's on the piss. No, you wouldn't say that. Oh, on the piss. On the piss. <laughs> on the piss. Yeah, you wouldn't say that. <laughs> say that in the UK. No, I'm not. I'm not quite on sure. I've heard it in on Canada. The I think. On the lash. Okay. On the juice, you would say. And taking dead, taking dead piss to make fun of somebody. Then. Take the Mickey. Take the Mickey. Yeah, yeah. Take, take the Mickey. I've heard that. I'm not quite sure if it's typically American. No, that's um, that's British because it comes from Cockney rhyming slang. Ah. Yeah, watch, watch the video. We've got it in the, the video. Another strange one I've heard in, in Australia is uh, instead of taking the piss, is um, you hanging shit on someone. If, they're, uh, <laughs> if you're deliberately making fun of one person, in particular, ah. you're, you're hanging yeah. shit on them. Oh, yeah. like that's that. quite colourful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, so, it's kind of descriptive, it sounds. So precise, like <laughs> that. <laughs> so we have quite a lot of variations there. Do you have any others to add for us? Please comment below. the fork and tomatoes became very popular because people from all over the world subscribed to their videos and they liked every video too and you know what else they shared all their happy and lovely thoughts in the comments and they clicked on the bell so they wouldn't miss a thing and get notified every time a new video was released so in the end the fork and tomatoes lived happily ever after. The end.